and welcome to this video on Introduction to Division. What we're going to do is take a look at some division problems, learn some vocabulary words, and get you familiar with the concept. Here we have a problem, 18 divided by 2 equals 9. Let's look at each number and see what each number represents. The 18 is called the dividend, and this is the number that is being divided into. The 2 is called the divisor, and this is the number that exactly divides into the dividend. And finally, our 9 is called a quotient. This is the result or the answer to the division problem. Let's take a look at two more words that have to do with division. The first one is divisible. Divisible means can be divided into. So if we look at our problem, 18 divided by 2 equals 9, we could say that 18 is divisible by both 2 and 9. Another word you should know is factor. A factor is when one number divides exactly into another number. So once again, looking at our problem, we could say that 2 and 9 are factors of 18. Let's go ahead and do a few division problems together. The first one, example 1, will be 15 divided by 3. Now there are two ways you can write this, two main ways you can write this, there are others. The first is in a simple number sentence format where you're writing 15 divided by 3 equals. Another way you could do it is by using the division bar and you would read it 15 divided by 3. 3 would be your divisor, 15 would be your dividend, your quotient goes on top. In both cases, we're asking how many times does 3 go into 15? If it goes in evenly, you will not have a remainder. If it does not go in evenly, and you have numbers left over, we call those numbers a remainder, and we'll look at that in a second. So we know that 15 divided by 3 equals 5, because 5 goes into 15 three times. If we're using the division bar, we're going to go ahead and put our 5 over the 5 and 15, because we're dividing the 3 into the entire number 15. We multiply 3 times 5, which equals 15. We subtract, get 0, for a final answer of 5. Let's go ahead and look at another problem. In example 2, we've got 24 divided by 7. What we're going to do is ask ourselves, how many times does 7 go into 24 without going over? So. Knowing the multiplication facts, we know that 7 times 3 is 21, 7 times 4 is 28. Since 28 is higher than 24, we've got to multiply by 3. So we put our 3 over the 4 and the 24 because we're using this entire number. We multiply 7 times 3 is 21. We put that directly under the 24, subtract. 4 minus 1 is 3, 2 minus 2 is 0, it's not necessary to put our 0. We ask ourselves, is this number here less than 7? If this number is less than 7, which it is because it's 3, that becomes our remainder. So our final answer is 3, remainder 3. Let's say we weren't sure if this was the correct answer, we can go ahead and check it. So what we would do is, we would take this 3, multiply it by 7. So we could do that over here, 7 times 3. We get 21. We take our remainder of 3 and add it to 21. For a final answer of 24, since 24 matches or dividend, we know that we did a good job. When you're working in division, it's really important to write your numbers neatly and in neat rows so that you don't get confused and you can see the numbers clearly. 
So in our problem here, notice how all the numbers are lined up perfectly so that we have a nice, neat problem and we're better able to get the answer. Remember that division is the opposite operation of multiplication. So when you're learning your times tables, it's also helping you to learn division facts. We could look at fact families to see this. In our problem 8 times 4 equals 32, we also know that 32 divided by 8 is 4, and 32 divided by 4 is 8. It all works together. Let's go ahead and do a practice problem. In the problem, 16 divided by 8 equals 2. Circle the number that represents the dividend. If you circled the 16, you were correct. The dividend is the number being divided. For the next practice problem, go ahead and solve 19 divided by 6. What you're doing is you're asking yourself how many times does 6 go into 19 without going over 19. Knowing your multiplication facts, we know that 6 times 3 is 18. So we're going to put our 3 directly over our 9. We're going to multiply the 6 times 3 to get 18. We put the 18 directly under the 19, subtract. We're left with 1. Since 1 is less than 6, 1 becomes our remainder for a final answer of 3, remainder 1.